Hey everyone, this is the Beard of Zero. This is going to be my review of the NECA Alien 3 Wave. I think this is Series 9? Or Series 8 or 9. I probably should look this up. It'll be in the title. Eh. <laughs> It's, it's eight or nine. I think it's I think it's uh, eight, eight. I think this is eight because I think nine is new. Alien. Anyways, eh, whatever. Eh, there's been a bit of delay on this. Um, I got uh, well most of these figures because I've I've had this forever. This is the, the original series three, you know, uh, dog alien. So I'm not gonna rebuy the figure. There's no point. <laughs> I looked at the gray variant, it honestly there's not much difference. I would rather have the one where it's, I thought it was gonna be the molten one where like you have the cracked dome and stuff. I don't want the gray variant. That's just not a good enough um change for me. I don't like this Xeno design that much in order to you know, get like a slight variation on it. It's not like the Alien Warrior. This is still a fantastic fucking figure, but this is the only one I need. So just right off the bat, if you want to know my full thoughts on this figure, there is an entire review. I will put an annotation right here. If you want to go see that, that's been, what, a year and a half now? Uh, Christmas, when these came out, that's when I got this. You know, through the NECA eBay page. So, it's been a long time. I've had this figure for a good long while. It is slightly dusty. You can see I dusted it up real good, but you probably can't even see it on camera, but I can. So, uh, the reason I held off on doing these for a while is because I got these two during the whole thing where I uploaded the reaction to Brando's video and yeah, I know that just keeps plaguing my fucking channel and I didn't want to upload a Necker review while all that attention was going on my channel because I didn't want those haters to bleed over into an actual review and <laughs> mainly because one of those big talking points popped his ugly ass head into this video and that is quality control and here's the thing this was totally my fault and I guess we'll go ahead and start off with that and it'll be on Ripley, and it's this arm right here. It broke. You see the hand broke off? That's totally my fault. I knew of this issue. I knew that the joints in here were a bit rubbery, and then sometimes they might stick, so you have to warm them up. That's no big issue, right? If you just gotta warm up the joint so it's unstuck, that's fine. I felt of it. I felt that it was stuck. And I thought, you know what? I don't give a fuck about these arms anyways. I don't want to break out the hair dryer. I was just... And it just, you know, I felt it twisting. It didn't break off instantly. I had a twist, and then twist back, twist back, twist back, and finally the plastic just seared. So it was like a good minute of t twisting in there. Totally my fault. Totally my fault. Like, it was stuck, but the break was my fault. I could have fixed it. But, like I said, honestly, I don't give a fuck about the jacket look. Um, mainly because there's no Wayland yutani logo on the back here. Because they have it covered out where it, in the hood where it should be. I wish that the logo was on there, honestly, because that would have been cool. But, uh, I much prefer this look. Where it's more reminiscent of the end of the film. I'm just going to paint up a little bit. This sleeveless look is more so what I think of when I think of Alien 3 Ripley. This looks fantastic. This is what I absolutely wanted, and I'm so glad that they did such a good job with it, and that you could swap out the arms. And really, you can get two figures, and I have two different looks, and I might do that eventually, because who knows, I might end up wanting another dog alien, like I might put this guy back in my, my alien Zyrom, or I had him, you know, keep one of these with an alien three. I definitely want another one of these guys, we'll get to him in a minute. <laughs> and, yeah, this, this figure is absolutely outstanding. Now, there is something else that was a bit of an issue with this, and that is most of these joints were backwards in the package, and I've seen a couple other people do that as well. That is honestly no big fucking deal. You just spin the joint around, and there you go. It's with the arms. All the arms were backwards. They were like that. So they would bend backwards. Spin it around. It's fine. The legs. This whole entire thigh thing was spinning around of both of them. And not only that, this was spent all the way around like that. And the shoes were like this, so her laces were on the back, everything was on the back. So that was a bit weird. But literally all you gotta do is spin around, so if that happens to you, don't contact NECA about CS, just spin the fucking thing around for God's sakes. <laughs> I mean, it's still pretty shitty, honestly, that they could get this assembled backwards, but it's just a ball pick. You just gotta spin it around. That's no big deal. And again, like, the brake on the arm was entirely my fault. So, let's go ahead and show you if I can get it back out. Ugh. 
Let's see here. It's been so long since I applied these. My hands are a bit slippery too. Come on. Come on. There we go. Got one of them off. And let's see. Can I do this? Let me see if I can. Ha 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 ha. One arm it. This is what we're going to do. See, the jacket just slips right over. So let's see. Let's find this arm over here. It's actually one that still has a hand on it. <laughs> And we'll just pop that back in. And you got that look for Ripley. Of course, you know, you got that unsleeved. That actually kind of looks kind of cool if you could, like, sculpt, like, a ripped sleeve or something to have, like, a cool custom. But, yeah, that's really, really neat. Uh, but, personally, I don't like that look. You get less articulation in the, the sleeved arms because, you know, there's just a bunch of material here. I much prefer the sleeveless look. Again, that is what I think of when I think of Alien 3 Ripley. So... Just take that back off, and we'll just slide this back off, like so. Put back this arm. Come on. There we go. And it's like brand new. <laughs> uh, she just comes with two accessories that she can hold. Uh, you got the uh, flare here, which I think that's the correct way to hold it so you don't burn your fucking eyes out. Um... So yeah, I wish she had a hinge in the hand. It's just a ball joint. That is a disappointment. But, I mean, the fact that we got this Ripley figure in such a good state anyways, that's, yeah, it's a miracle in my opinion. Because <laughs> Alien 3 doesn't get much love. And this is definitely a lot of love when this, so... Eh, I don't really see how they could do the hands uh, with a hinge. Like, they didn't even do a hinge on Ripley from uh, Aliens. I don't think even Alien has a hinge, so... It's like they're, they're adverse from doing hinges in their female figures. Which, eh, I don't know about that. Uh, she also comes with a flashlight. You just rip that off. I much prefer the flare because that is more iconic Alien 3 to me. But, you know, if you want the flashlight, you can have her hold her net like this. Kind of like creepy. Looking pose like that. There we go. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> that looks cool. And that's free floating pose too. Free floating pose. So yeah, I don't see how people could just break their neck of figures just posing around. Like I I've had no trouble out of that. So I, I guess you guys have been extremely unlucky. I mean, I'm sorry to beat a dead horse. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want that to bleed over into the video, but it just got ahead to there because look at that. Look at that fucking pose. Here, let's just look at that. Very dynamic, looks very cool. It's standard up upright, easily achievable. So yeah, I just want to say, hopefully the pop poster in the background is not too, too distracting. <laughs> uh, there, I'll do a room tour later today after I clean up this room because it is a fucking mess right now. But uh, yeah, uh, I moved some things around. <laughs> and like I said, dog alien, you want to see the full review? It's on the channel. Long story short, this thing's fucking amazing. I like this thing more than the Queen, which I got a lot of shit for when I said that originally, but a lot of people still agree with me on that. This is a far better figure than the Queen, but the Queen is still a fantastic figure. This is just a step beyond that, and the AVP Xenos are a step beyond this. This has been outdated a little bit in the articulation-wise. you got to remember this is like a year and a half, two-year-old sculpt. So... The AVP Xenos are going to blow this thing away, but this is still really fucking good for the time. So we'll just move this guy over there. And now we have the Wailing Yutani Commando. Oh, buddy boy. This thing is beautiful. Uh, he has a bit limited articulation, but he has more than you think he would. Something that's very comparable to this is like the compression suits from Alien, or, or from Alien Isolation as well, basically it's the same figure. Those are pretty freaking limited, it's like in the bends, like in the knee and inside the elbow. You can't really do anything there. At least you can get this guy to hold his gun two-handed. That's a miracle, considering you know, like how bulky this suit is. And the fact that you know they've, they've hit their articulation as well as they did, and you still have as much range, that's really good engineering. Really good engineering, I like that. You got all these little nice details inside of here. It's uh. 
wish these were removable, but you know that would help drive the price. And this, if they'd done that, then this guy would have been like 25, 30 bucks, kind of like how the Bad Blood Predator was. So <laughs> I'm fine with that because these guys are definitely going to want an army build, and you can customize them. They come with water slide decals, which are easy as hell to do. I was so imitated about them. But if I can find them, I don't know where the fucking package is. Like I said, this room's a mess. <laughs> if I can find those water slide decals, I'm going to apply them because I did them on another Bandai model kit that I got, which is going to be like the next review after this. And that thing turned out really, really nice. So, yeah. I'm really on board with the water slide decals now. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and show you the range that this guy has. Just because you can't really tell just by looking at it. Like, that's as far as the arm will go up without clashing. The Yeah, that's as far as the hinge will let you go, and it almost clashes too, so that's... Like, perfectly built for the suit, which is nice. You're not really going to deface the rubber when you do that. This, yeah, this is like a soft rubber piece up here, by the way. This whole whole thing up here is soft rubber. Uh, see, that is as far back as it would go. Yeah, that clashes a little bit. That's as far as it would go without clashing. And the elbows will bend more than that. So they'll go at least 90, just about 90 degrees. Maybe a slight more like 92 yeah, about 92. You see, that's kind of straight. There's already a built-in curve in the arm there. So that will go slightly more than 90, which is really all you need. And also look at how the fucking silver paint's on that. That looks really fucking good. That reminds me of Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> really nice. And yeah, this arm's just about the same. Uh, except for it's slightly more limited in the up and down. Because that's as far as you can go up because of the shoulder piece. And you cannot force this. Even though this is soft rubber, it stops it like a fucking doornail. So, yeah. <laughs> it'll, go, uh, it'll go back pretty far, though. So, I mean, you know, considering there's a thing back here. <laughs> and, see, yeah, it's just uh, no hinge in here either. It's weird. It's like there's no hinges in any of these human figures. See, that's, yeah, it's just a ball. The legs, uh, that's about far forward to go without clashing right there. And... They do rotate, which is nice, you know, at the at the thigh. I don't know why you would want to do that, though, because you don't really need it. You can rotate it here at the knee, and you won't break up the sculpt when you do that, because you've got the zippers and the, the track lines and everything on there. Here's the most disappointing piece of articulation for me. Uh, the knee. I mean, like, you're not really going to have this guy in action poses, but it just does limit it a little bit. The knee, that's about as far as it'll go. And it does have, like, two points that it, it wants to... Wants to stop there, and then it'll stop at his final resting place. So it'll be like there, there, and there. So it's kind of got like three notches. It's not a ratchet joint. It's just like that's just where it wants to stop at, which is weird. This one, about the same too. Although I think that one goes back a little bit more. Yeah, it does. It's got a slightly uh, different, which is weird the way that's built. But, uh, let's see, go ahead and push that down. Uh, as far as the legs will go out, that's the biggest split that he can do. He can do it more so on his right leg than he can his left leg. So it's like there's more articulation than the right leg in general, which is weird. <laughs> and you got, uh, just a small ball on the foot. You get pivot, you get forward and back. It's not too much. I'm hoping if you can see it. Yeah, that's... That's pretty much it. Now, in terms of accessories, uh, one of them's still in the package, so I'm sorry, I don't know where it's at. <laughs> but you get the knife, which is going to get instantly warped when you put it inside there, so just use that. It goes inside the boot, right there. I mean, she's not really going to hold it well anyway, so that's just like a nice... It's just the way that's sculpted, it's going to get bent. So, uh, that's just the way you're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> uh, let's see. It comes with a pulse rifle. Completely unpainted, but... That's the way it was in the movie. They were all black. So, yeah. <laughs> movie accurate. That's cool. Uh, I wish they cast it in, like, a different plastic and painted it black, though. Because that definitely would have, you know, added to it. But the fact that it, it's still just black. That's the way it's supposed to be. So, still, I wish it was painted and not just cast. Because that would add, you know, an uh, extra veneer to it. But, oh, well. And he has two accessories for his face. So, yeah, these little things right here, the plug in the eyes, and one of them allows you to have it up like that, 
The other one goes inside the face, so it covers up the eyes. Like that. That's my preferred look, but if I ever get another one, I'll probably put the, um, the thing up. I mean, I want to get another one, because I want to get, like, at least two or three of these guys. Because these are easy army builders. And if we ever do get any ACM figures, could I have a couple of these guys? Just saying. <laughs> Hell, they might even reissue this guy for ACM. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and look at the, the guy's face real quick, see if you can see it. Uh, not really. Just turn it upside down. There you go, you can kind of see his eyes in there. There is an eye, sculpt, forebrow, uh, not forebrow, forehead, some eyebrows. That's about it. I've seen somebody take off this helmet, and you don't want to do that. It's just a mess up under there. It's just a bunch of plugs where all these plug into. So it's not like a human face with these things glued on top of it. It's, it's meant to look like this. And they just sculpted eyes under there for a cool little extra detail. There's not a face under there, so don't even try. <laughs> You're going to be disappointed. Then, yeah, there's like the cloth mask up under there, too, which looks so neat. So neat. So if you can, you can see it. Look at that. That looks so cool. This thing's really nicely detailed. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention with the articulation. It's basically non-existent in the head. Holy shit. I didn't pay attention to the time, and it ran out. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to end this video instead of just uploading as one thing I usually do. Yay! Um, yeah, the... Head articulation non-existent, pretty much. You can go up a little bit, go down a little bit, left a little bit, you know, right a little bit. Oh, I got those backwards, but um, yeah, that's pretty much all you got. So he's always basically going to be looking forward. You can kind of mess around with it. There, there is a waist joint. This one, nah. There is a waist joint there, but I don't know if you want to mess with it. So mine feels kind of tight. Oh, oh, there we go. <clears throat> okay, we'll spin all the way around there. So, you're going to look around. You basically got to use that waist joint to your advantage if you're going to make his head pose. It's so like that right there. That, yeah, oh, shit. Oh, shit, look at that. Anybody yeah, says I ain't a good poser, well, you know, whatever. You're wrong. <laughs> oh, looks so good. Looks better in person than it does on camera, just because the angles and the, the lens I'm using. But that's fucking awesome. So yeah, let's uh, get this replay back up here. Uh oh, that's with an ankle. Come on. Doesn't help that this table is on a freaking angle too. <laughs> let's see. There we go. And we'll bring the dog alien back in and move the camera just to accommodate all of them. Now, for the review of all of them in general, uh, I gotta say, if you are a fan of Alien 3, these are all must-buys. These are all fantastic. Um, like I said, this guy barely appeals, uh, appears in the film, but it is a really cool figure, nicely detailed, it could be better articulated, but it's a nice add-on character to Ripley and the dog alien. Uh, do I wish we had Dylan or somebody else in the film? Yeah. But... For right now, this is a pretty good assortment, honestly. And Dog Alien is a definite must-buy. So if you miss out on that somehow, which I don't want to watch it somehow, because it sold out really quickly. A lot of people bought like six of these things. I don't know why you would do that for a Dog Alien. I understand for a regular Xeno, because you see armies of those, but a Dog Alien, you only see one. So, eh. You know, unless it's an actual variant, I don't think I'd buy multiples of a dog alien myself. But, you know, whatever. Different strokes, different folks. Buy what you want to, it's your money. This one you could probably double down on because you have the jacket look and the arms look. So it depends on how much you like the jacket look. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it. So, I don't know. I mean, it's still cool, but I, I wish it had the way on your tiny symbol on the back of it. Like I said, that's just perfectly covered up by the... <laughs> So I don't know if they did that just because they didn't want to sculpt the Wailing Yutani symbol on there, or like if they couldn't, or if they just wanted to have it like that. Uh, but honestly, I would like to see a hooded Ripley come out with the Wailing Yutani symbol on the back, because she does wear the hood up a couple times, so that would be nice. Unless I'm misremembering a different jacket, but I know she wears one that does have a Wailing Yutani symbol on the back while she's wearing a hood, so... <laughs> Yeah, Alien 3 is very confusing. <laughs> I don't pay as much attention to what people are wearing in that film as I do in, like, Aliens, because the, the designs aren't as iconic, in my opinion. The Assembly Cut is still a fantastic film, but still. 
Um, this guy, though, definitely very iconic design. You recognize him from Alien 3 as soon as you see him, so that's why I think he's a must-buy. Just because you know what he is when you see him. Just the same with the dog alien. And, of course, Ripley, you know, everybody knows Alien 3, Ripley, bald. Just why they made a joke about it in Deadpool, so... <laughs> So yeah, uh, this entire set should be just like cleaning off storage shelves. Every time I've seen them, they've always disappeared. So that's pretty good. If I find another one of these commandos, I'm definitely going to pick them up. Uh, I've seen more dog aliens warming pegs uh, than I have anything. And, and I say warming pegs. I've only seen like two or three that have just been sitting there. But still, the dog aliens are out there now. So if you miss one, grab it because it's a fantastic figure. But... If you already have this one from Series 3, there's really no reason for you to have to upgrade because it's the same figure. They didn't add anything to it. It's just like the same, uh, the regular brown one is just like the same paint detail as this one. The, the gray one is just a slight variation. So unless that slight variation is a big deal to you, don't bother. Don't bother with picking up the dog alien if you already have it. If you don't, order this entire set right now and just be done with it. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna say right now. That's just you need these in your collection. They're fantastic, and while they're not as good as the um, the previous wave with the AVP stuff, I think that's more so deal with uh, the fact that they're just reissuing the same Zeno. So that's probably why it feels like it's a slight step back because it is a nearly two year old figure. So you know. That's why I think it's just going to sli feel slightly outdated, because those AVP Xenos are just so fantastic. Like, that articulation uh, in the Xenos and the AVP Predators just beats any fucking import figure that I've ever seen. For $20, you just can't beat that. That's really fucking cool. So, yeah. Um, all of these figures are fantastic. Like I said, the only breakage that I had on any of them was this. Totally my fault. Totally my fault. If you feel that it's stuck on yours, warm it the fuck up, <laughs> and you'll be fine. Um, also, J John Carlos McMaster, he had some where his hands were on backwards. He purposely bought that one too, so yeah, whatever. Uh, so yeah, that's really really good. All the paint details, paint details, nice on these. I like. Um, there's really no defects in all the ones that I picked out. I, I just grabbed the ones that they had. Honestly, I don't even. I trust NECA's paint detail enough that I don't actually look at them in the store. Like, Marvel Legends I'll pick through, but not these. I've never had a bad NECA figure. And the only one I've ever seen uh, with a really, really bad paint job was the Alien Isolation Amanda Ripley, or her eye... Whoa, that was my fault. <laughs> like, where her eye was on her cheek over here. <laughs> that was really bad, and that one is still at Toys R Us right now. So, yeah, it's... That's that. That one was not good. So yeah, that's that's the Alien Three wave. I think this is Series Eight. Yeah, Series Eight. I know it because Isolation was six, AVP was seven. This is eight. So Series Nine is the one that's got um Frost and Vasquez and everything. So I think everybody's really excited for that wave. This is a fantastic series. Like I said, you absolutely must own this. Still my second favorite Xeno figure. Still my second favorite Xeno figure. So it's like AVP Xeno, Dog Alien, Alien Queen, Alien Warrior, then Big Chap. So yeah, it's still really fucking good. <laughs> uh, really unstable table. I mean, so look, how, look how unstable this table is. <laughs> I need a new review table, honestly. Um, this is just a DG, uh, DJ Hero uh, Renegade Edition table. So it's like really flimsy. <laughs> I'm surprised things don't fall over more often on this damn thing. So yeah, that's it for this video. It went over really long, but yeah, I just wanted to talk since I had to do a second segment anyways, so why not? So yeah, buy these. I mean, I'm a little late putting this up, but seriously guys, buy these. These are awesome. <laughs>